Hi everybody. Such a beautiful day. I decided to do this outside in my garden. I have got hundreds of thousands of people that are watching the hummingbird videos that I've put up and thousands of questions and comments and they're all great. And, and so I decided to go over that a little bit more and maybe answer some questions or comment on some of them. I even made myself notes. We keep going back to the sugar. I see people put down sugar is no good, don't give white sugar. Hummingbirds are not people. And you'll see there's tons of hummingbirds flying around me right now. Hummingbirds are not people. Their metabolism can only digest when it comes to that type of sugar, sucrose. White sugar, believe it or not, which is no good for us really, and yet we do use it, is the only thing they can metabolize. If you give them honey, there is sometimes a bacteria in there, it will kill them. It can kill them. They cannot process that either. So you're much better off to go with white sugar. Now, sugar these days, at least in the US, white sugar does not mean cane sugar. It could be beet sugar or cane sugar. The research I've done going back to the hummingbird societies and looking everything up is either one is okay. Cane sugar is better, but the beet sugar will not hurt them. It, it's fine. This is not their sole diet. That is the nectar that they're going around collecting out of flowers, basically. They are eating insects. They're eating bits of pollen. They're not just living on that, but they have such a high metabolism that they need enough sugar so they can process everything in their body. So keep in mind, white sugar is okay for them. Anything else is not. Don't give brown sugar because there's molasses in that. They cannot process brown sugar. Don't give powdered sugar that you would bake with because that has corn starch in it. They cannot process that. That could end up clogging up their system. Um, no agave. They cannot process agave. So it's basically it's white sugar. I mean, you're fine with white sugar. If you want to feed them, really what you want to feed is what is good for them and what's going to be beneficial for them. This way, in case they can't find enough flowers or enough nectar, they'll come to the feeders and then they'll fly off. When you see a bunch of hummingbirds, it's not necessarily the same hummingbird. A lot of times you'll see hummingbirds, you'll think, oh, it's the same one eating all day. No, that one can come eat and be gone 15, 20 minutes, an hour, may not even come back. There you've got multiple hummingbirds coming. So with that, keep in mind they're not solely just drinking out of your hummingbird feeder. So I wanted to get, get through with that and try to make people understand that this is what their body needs. It's, it's like people and dogs, you know, dogs need certain things, cats need certain things, guinea pigs need a certain diet. If you don't have C in it, they'll die, vitamin C. You know, they're, they need sucrose, and that's the only thing that you're gonna get sucrose. Now, as far as dye, oh, people are screaming, the dye will kill them. God, I can hear them buzzing all around me. It, you know, putting one or two drops of dye is not going to kill them. I've already done the research on that. But here's the thing, they don't need it. All they need is to see some sort of red on the feeder. They have no sense of smell, but they have an excellent eyesight and excellent hearing. But as far as the sense of smell, they have no sense of smell. And please, another thing I wanted to bring up. I've seen people say they want to add in grape juice and cranberry juice and orange juice. They have no sense of smell. They may not know you've added that in and that can make them perish. You don't want anything in there that is going to make your kidneys or liver, you know, not function correctly. So don't add any juice. The ratio that is the best is one to four. And I know people have said it doesn't make any sense. Believe it or not, when you add in one cup of sugar to four cups of water, you end up with four cups of liquid. The sugar becomes part of the water and that's it. It, it doesn't make it five cups, it's four cups. So don't go by, by the calculation as far as measurement. It's one cup of sugar to four cups of water. You need one cup of boiling water because
is it's going to be one part sugar fork parts water. One cup of boiling water. It will dissolve the sugar quickly that way. And if your glass is not heat, you know, good for heat, then use a plastic, a good heavy duty plastic one or get a good glass one. Stir it up. It dissolves very quickly. And look at that. It's all dissolved. Now what you're going to do is slowly add in three more cups and I use tap water. If you can drink your tap water, it's fine for the birds. So that's one, two, three. A quick stir and you're done. That's all it takes to make hummingbird food. I make, because I have so many hummingbirds, I make daily, many times, two cups of sugar to eight cups of water. And you could actually do it in one measuring cup if you wanted to, because it's not going to make any more volume. I can't explain why. It's, it's something to do with the sugar actually becomes part of the water in, in small amounts as, you know, as we're talking of one or two cups. So you could do a quarter of a cup of sugar and then add in a cup of water and you'll have the same thing because it's one to four. No matter how you look at it, it's one to four. It's volume and that's what you want. So it's four cups of water to one cup of white sugar. Let's see what else is there people have asked about. Um, some people want to make it higher concentrated. If you went a little bit higher, let's say in the winter, you know, maybe for their energy, it's not going to hurt them. But if you make it lower and if you add it in, uh, let's say one cup of sugar to five or six cups of water, that could cause a lot of problems because they don't know. Again, they have no sense of smell. They're, they'll drink it and then they'll burn out energy. They may not be able to make it back to look for other food. They'll actually, they could end up starving. So the best thing to do, and it's not my recipe. This is the Hummingbird Societies. This has been going on for years and years and years. Stick with the four cups of water to one cup of sugar. Just stay with that and you'll be good to go. You want to add a little bit. Some people say add a little bit more. It's up to you if you want to do it in the winter, but they don't need it. You're actually wasting your time and they don't need it. As far as vitamins, some people said their area has said that the, the hummingbirds needed more calcium. I don't know how they'd need more calcium. They go around and they eat insects. They're not just eating your hummingbird nectar. They're eating insects. They're going into spider webs. They're collecting insects off of there. They'll find, they'll go around trees and they'll find places where the tree had a little bit of sap come out and the insects have gotten stuck. They will take that. So yes, they're getting a little bit of sap from the tree, but they're actually going after the insect. They're getting plenty of calcium and vitamins out of their insects. So unless the fish and wildlife in your area has got some sort of notice out, which I have not heard of, but it can happen, saying do this and that for hummingbirds, I wouldn't do it. Only if you hear from them, because they don't need it. Boiling the water. Oh, everybody says, some people say you gotta boil the water. The only reason I boil the water is to make sure the sugar, the, when I first start mixing it, you've seen my recipe and I'll put the links up. I make sure that the sugar melts to a clear liquid. I don't want it grainy, because then it's gonna be off. Um, so I boil the water. But as far as boiling the whole thing, if, if I'm making eight cups of water to two cups of sugar, no, I don't boil the whole thing. Is that gonna hurt them? No, if my water's gonna hurt me, then maybe it'll hurt them. But keep in mind, they're flying around, they're going into the street to drink water, they're going into your sprinklers to drink water, they're going on the lawns, you know, when you've watered your lawn with the hose and, and the water's getting onto the leaves. They're drinking water. As long as you can drink your water, don't worry about them. A little bit of chlorine or chloramine in there isn't gonna hurt them. You can use bottled water. If you want to use bottled water, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Definitely use bottled water, but you don't have to use bottled water. If, as long as you can drink it, they'll be able to drink it because they're drinking it. They're drinking it because if you're watering anywhere around your house, they're coming around when you don't see them and they're getting water. Whether it's your house, whether it's your neighbors, a mile down the road, they're getting water. Better to get your water than to drink out of the street you know, and you don't know what cars are left behind. So don't worry about that. Um, let's see. People ask about hibernation, too. 
because of their metabolism being so high, they what they do at night is they almost go into a hibernation for the night. Their whole body basically shuts down. I mean, yes, their heart's pumping and everything, but they really shut down until morning because they're such a hyper bird, a, you know, an animal. So they don't hibernate, but they shut their bodies down when they go to sleep at night. I think that's the best way to describe it. But they have to keep eating. If they don't find a good source of food, they will die. And that, and that can happen. So if you've got a lot of them in your area and you can help by putting out feeders like I do, that's, that's why you'll end up with a lot. What happens is, you know, a lot of you have seen the video where the hummingbird nested right on the feeder. And she's back, by the way. But anyway, they nested right, she nested right on the feeder and I was swinging the hook in and cleaning it and, you know, not, the, not her thing, the feeder. What happens with that is when she has her babies and she had six babies in one year, she had three, three clutches, those babies stick around. The following season, those babies are having babies. And so as long as we don't have snow, they may stick around the area and then the numbers build, say, and that's what's happening. Each of those babies that are females are gonna have more and more babies. So they do like to come back to the same nest or the area because they'll all stay in the location they were born or where they were comfortable. Somebody made a really nasty comment about how dare you swing that hook. Let me tell you something. When that theater was empty, she was buzzing around the window, she was screaming. She built that, it took weeks to build that nest, that first time she built the nest, and she expects that feeder to be full. And yes, I swung it in. I usually waited till she was gone, and because I didn't want to disturb her while she was sitting on the nest, whether it was, there were eggs in there or not. And when she took off, I would swing it in and change the feeder, because the feeder had to be changed. And what I did was, I usually had two feeders, so I didn't have to sit there and mess around too much. Just unhook it and put a new feeder back. Um, she was not far, so she would be in the area, and like I said, they have terrific eyesight. And she would see me swing that in and come zipping up, and she'd be by the window, back and forth. But she knew what I was doing. She was perfectly fine. I'd hook it up, swing it out, and, and hook, hook the theater back on there. And she'd go back and sit on the nest or take off if she was hunting. Once the babies, though, got a little size to them, I didn't want to take any chances because she knows me, and even though the babies kind of know me, I didn't take any chances, and at that time, I stopped changing the feeder. Was she angry? Oh, you betcha, but I put a second feeder on my other kitchen window, so she started to feed off of that one and became territorial on that one. So once the babies left, then I went back to starting to put more food in the feeder, but I didn't change the feeder once the babies got size and started to have feathers in case they would accidentally jump off. I didn't want to do that. Let's see, what else did, was there? There were so many great, great questions. Um, she even got sick once when she had, uh, she got egg bound. There wasn't a question on that. I, I was devastated. That was her second or third clutch, I can't remember, because she's had multiple clutches for years. But she got egg bound and she hung out there and a Oriole came down. I thought it was going to attack her and I stayed home that day all day chasing away the birds from her and she stayed, she knew I was helping her. She stayed there and just puffed up and everything and I thought we were going to lose her but you know, I didn't, you can't really mess with her. Gary said you can't mess with nature, leave them alone. So I just shoot around off the other birds that came and bothered her. She sat there all day puffed up. She did, thank goodness, have her feeder so she could drink. She did not hunt that day. And then later that evening, she, just before sundown, she laid that egg and she was happy again and everything. So she got egg bound a little bit, just on one egg. The rest of them, she did not. As you can see, they're flying over my shoulder. So I was really nervous on that, but she made it through. Um, she, you know, if she had babies, would I have taken them out to hand feed? I don't know, I probably would have called somebody. Have you ever seen somebody hand feed baby hummingbirds? I have. There's a lot of rescue groups. There's people from the San Diego Zoo because they have a hummingbird enclosure there. I was at a convention once and uh, years ago, and this lady knew who I was and came up and said, would you like to see my hummingbirds? And I said, well, hummingbirds, just, I've got hummingbirds here. Don't tell anybody. And uh, I said, oh, okay. And she lowers her blouse and inside her bra, she had two baby hummingbirds she was feeding. The reason was, 
she couldn't leave him at home, and they have to be fed constantly with an eyedropper. It was a very tiny eyedropper. And um, she was carrying in her bra those two little hummingbirds until they were ready to be put back wherever they were supposed to go. So this is around the clock. Unless they go to sleep really good at night, you are feeding them around the clock. So they're, they're really tough little birds to hand feed. I just, I'm amazed. I'm sitting here and the place is covered in birds. We've even got spice finches that have been coming in. They're not native, but they live here now and they come daily and they eat out of my uh, feeders. I put out bowls of food now. So I just love it. There's like, there's right now there's about 20 different species of birds around me, not counting the hummingbirds over my shoulder. I am going to guess that the hummingbird that nested on her windowsill was probably an Anna's because she did have a red throat. From what I'm reading, all the other hummingbirds, the females do not have the red throat. But the Anna's can, that's, that's interesting. And she definitely had a good red throat on her. So I'm gonna guess that she was an Anna's. Some people said that they were worried about hummingbirds fighting. Well, as you can see, as long as they know they have more than enough food, and they are aware that the feeder is gonna be full all the time, they may or may not fight. Your Rufus, they're a little rusty looking bird, which is one of the smaller ones, is the nastiest. <laughs> Their temperament is really bad. They'll take one feeder and guard it. What I have noticed though is usually, as the sun is going down, their mind frame changes and you may see multiple hummingbirds feeding after he's guarded it all day they'll start to bring, let other birds feed because I think in their mind even though a lot of them understand it's a feeder it, they also think of it as a flower and in their mind it's the end of the flower the sun's going down the flower is going to die out and they have to hunt for a new flower and they kind of give up on fighting at night and they all come in and feed so I have noticed that um, Somebody else asked about hummingbirds. Do they kill each other? Absolutely. Unfortunately, they can. They fight. Some of them are so nasty, they fight. And I think that's why I really, really like to keep multiple hummingbird feeders all over, everywhere. We have a lot of hummingbirds here, and I've got a neighbor over the hill that told me she's got a lot. So I want to keep them as happy as possible. I rarely find a dead one, and I don't have them fighting too much. So that's a good thing for here, but in some areas, if there's one feeder, it's not the feeder they're fighting over. They'll fight over flowers and territory and everything. You know, but I try to make sure that they're happy and maybe I can prevent some of that. Somebody else asked me about putting hummingbird feeders out in the winter. When do you take them in? If you're in an area that gets snow, they're probably going to migrate out of there. They're gonna leave and they're gonna to go to areas that are warmer where they will have plenty of food because of, they've got to feed. They're not going to go into hibernation for three months. If you see them and they're still in your area, like they're here all year, then definitely keep the feeder out. But if you put the feeder out and you notice there's no more hummingbirds, then go ahead and take the feeder in, wash it really good and pack it away until you start to see them in the spring because all the areas are different. There are hundreds of species of hummingbirds and there's about six in California though. But there's hundreds of species of hummingbirds and they move around and, and their habitat is different. Their, their way of living is different. Where they're gonna go is different. Their migratory routes are different. So everybody's different. So that's the main thing is if you see them, keep the feeder up. That's as, as easy as I can get. And if you do see them and it's bad weather, try to find some place like even under this umbrella, I could hang a feeder and they'll really appreciate that because they can come in and feed and not be in the rain. You can put it under the eaves of houses. That's what I do in the winter. I have a lot of them under the eaves. And somebody asked me, what is on top of your feeders that are on your deck? What it is, is a plate. Gary attached a plate. So if it's raining, it won't get the hummingbird feeder wet. And then they can still feed in the rain. Also, if you leave your hummingbird feeders out in the rain and it gets wet, a lot of times they won't come back to feed on it. I think it's too diluted. Some water might get in and I've noticed they stop coming. Um, ant guards I put out when I see ants. When I start to have a problem with ants, right now we don't have a problem again. They kind of come and go ants. 
then I don't need an ant cart. And when I see the ants start to give a problem, then I put an ant cart. I make my own out of cups. You can even use the Curac K cups and make your own. Or you can buy them online. I've seen them on eBay. The brass ones, they'll last you forever. They're less than $10 a piece. And you just fill them with water and it should be really, really good because they can't cross the water if you've got an ant problem. Uh, some people said they put oil on it or grease or the problem is dust gets on there ants get stuck to it and as soon as they get stuck to the oil or grease then they crawl over them and they use it again so i find the ant guard i don't think i've got any on there oh there's one there with the carrot cup and here i can show you real quick i made this one i made this one out of a carrot cup just put a wire through it put a little bit of uh, glue down there like aquarium sealer and just to hold it, and it doesn't leak. There's actually water in it right now. See, there's water. There was water in it. And the ants can't cross it. I make them out of carrot cups, but you can go buy them. That's been the best thing for me. The other thing, too, is this particular feeder has a well here. So this one has actually has a built-in ant guard. You would fill that with water, and then while it's hanging, they can't cross it and get to it. If the scout ant doesn't get to it, then you won't have an ant problem. It's the scouts. They send out the scouts. The scouts look around. They go, hey, there's food. You know, I found something. They rush back. They bring all their friends. If they can't get there, nobody knows it's there. So ant guards are really, really good. And ants are also seasonal. You'll see them have, like a few weeks ago, I had tons of them. Now the ants are kind of going away, and I guess they, they actually hibernate. far will they travel? Hummingbirds can travel 500 miles in one day, if need be. Isn't that something? That's how fast they are. And that's when they, some of them die. They'll perish. They might run into something, get picked up by another bird or something in the sky. So they do travel very far and very fast. And they cannot walk. One of the only birds that cannot walk. They'll hop. They can move their legs, but they don't walk. Then they're one of the only birds that can fly backwards and upside down at the same time. I think that's interesting. I find them fascinating. I love the hummingbirds. They also cost me a lot of money. We won't get into that. Okay. Many birds don't pair for life. Do they pair for life, somebody once asked. No, they don't pair at all. They do not get a mate, and they are not romantic. The females out there, the male, a male breeds with her, probably multiple males. Then she goes, she builds the nest, she lays the eggs, of course, she incubates the eggs, and she raises the babies. Everything completely on her own. Talk about women's rights. She's got, she's, she's in charge of everything. That it's the female does, does the whole thing. The male does nothing but breed and that's it. He has no part in the lifestyle of them at all. That, that's it. He's just there to breed and he's gone. So he doesn't protect the nest. No, they're just around. They protect their feeders sometimes, the males, but that's it. They do not pair for life. Like I said, they don't pair at all. Some birds pair. Well, most birds do actually pair and even if the female is doing all the egg laying, of course, and the incubating, the male, a lot of times in certain species, will stick around and help and help feed. Not hummingbirds. They do not help feed. Uh, some people want to know how often to clean the feeders. You know, if you take your feeder down every few days, if it looks dirty, wash it with a little soap and water. A lot of times I like baking soda. Baking soda is really good. I get a toothbrush in there or a brush and wash it up really good. Somebody said they were upset because I said I used a tiny bit of bleach sometimes. You know what? Some of these, unfortunately, hummingbird feeders that I bought recently that I got for a good deal and I didn't know that they were not as good as I thought. They don't come apart. So you have to soak them and wash them and shake them and everything. I really, really like the ones that come completely apart. If you can't take them apart, you may have to soak in a little bit of solution of bleach and water. It's not going to hurt them. Just wash it and rinse it really good. Do what you have to do. If you're going out to get a new feeder, 
I would definitely make sure you can take it apart. If you can take the whole thing apart, base away from the bottom. Hummingbird feeders, glass or plastic, either one is fine. The main thing is, check it when you buy them, that you can take the whole thing apart. There are a few that are factory sealed and you can't get it apart and it will get moldy inside and you won't be able to clean it. Then that's a good feeder. And I have picked up some of the best feeders at the dollar store because the whole thing comes apart. How long do they last for? If they're hanging out in the sunlight, like back there, they might last one or two seasons. And when I say seasons, maybe one or two years. And if they don't, it costs you a dollar. And look at that, I even painted a little bit of red flowers on that one just because. I didn't need to. Red is what they're attracted to. I had somebody contact me and say, oh my gosh, my daughter got me a hummingbird feeder and they won't feed from it. Well, if you get something that they don't know, let's say this is a hummingbird feeder, a fancy one, you hang it up and it's got a spout, they don't know what it is, they're not going to feed from it. They don't know what it is. The ones from the dollar store, everybody's buying them, hanging them around, and they know what it is, so they can be flying by as fast as they can, you know, and they've got great eyesight. They spot that hummingbird feeder back there, or even the one behind me, and they know exactly what it is, and they'll beeline right out of the sky straight for it. So what I would do in that instant, if you get a hummingbird feeder that they don't know what it is, then put a gift. You get, take your fancy one you got for, as a gift or whatever, or the one you bought, and put another one right next to it. Hang them right next to each other. So when they come down to feed off of the plain old cheap one that they know what it is, they'll then look around to see if you've got something else. So that would be the way I would go on that. But as far as cleaning them, just clean it when you when you see it. You know, I rinse them and wash them out pretty good every time I do it. Uh, take them apart. Uh, it's sometimes it's a lot of times it's daily, but I just wash it kind of real quick. And if I see anything black on it, then of course I'll scrub it with a little baking soda. That works really good. I use baking soda even to clean out the sink and stuff. It makes everything smell good too. Let's see what else did people ask me? I already covered the tap water. So that's basically it. You know, the, the thing is, they eat pollen, they eat spiders, they eat other things besides the nectar, so don't worry about the sugar. You really want to give them what is good for them. I've had people say, oh, that's not your recipe. No, it's not my recipe. It's the recipe I use. This recipe's been around for decades. This is the recipe that's been studied, and it's one cup of sugar to four cups of water. And that's the recipe that they studied the sucrose. They didn't study the hummingbirds, so to say. I mean, of course they did, but it's what is in the flowers that they're feeding from. And it's sucrose. And that's what you want to feed them, is what their body is used to. We are not, though we eat it, you know, it is not the healthiest thing for us. Um, if you've got any other questions, I'll be more than happy to do research on that. But the main thing is, you know, they have a really good memory, the hummingbirds, so they'll know if you're putting out the food that they like and they'll come back. Somebody told me, oh, I'm not going to do it your way. It's not my way. It's just the way I have found that works. And I'm putting out this and that. He put out a different hummingbird formula and he thought it was better and then he said they all disappeared. Did they disappear because they figured out it was making them sick? Did they disappear because they found something better or did they drop off because they died? That's the thing. Obviously mine are not dying. Mine are sitting around here producing babies. I have thousands of hummingbirds now and I have to go out and watch for the sales as soon as the holidays come where they put the sugar on sale and they do for a dollar a bag and I go in there and buy a hundred bags of sugar and it lasts me a hundred packages of sugar tends to last me about a year. So that's not too bad. So they cost me a hundred dollars a year to feed. And you know what? It's a hundred dollars of enjoyment. Oh, one other thing people ask me, what was all over my windowsill when they looked at the other videos? That's fascinating. When the babies are little, when they, let's say poop, when they poop, they poop in a little sack. It looks like a little jelly sack. That's what it looks like. They're Poop comes out in the sack and mom picks it up, flies away with it, and drops it somewhere. 
probably in the plants, it gets composted in plants, it's very small. As they get older, they're smart enough to know on their own that they're going to stick their rears up and they're going to shoot. So if they were in a tree somewhere, they're shooting their poop away and it keeps their nest clean and it keeps predators away. Because predators, birds, reptiles, they, that's what they look for. And when they see a pile of bird, you know what, they know there might be food around and they'll go look to eat the eggs of the baby birds. So it's mother nature, it's an instinct. So they lift their tail and unfortunately, being in my kitchen window, literally right on the kitchen window, that's where they pooped all over the window. But you know what? It brushed right off after the babies were gone. I just took a paper towel and brushed it on the outside of the screen and it just brushed all off. Outside, like I said, it would disappear because they would be on a tree and they'd be pooping. They'd put their little tail up and poop out and well, that's just, you know, what they do, you know, and then it's, they keeps their nest really, really clean. So it's, they're not, they're not like a parrot in the wild when the parrots are in the trees, in the hollows of the trees. They, as they get older, it does cake up and it's fine for them. It, it works for them and it will cake up inside. So it's packed with that. And then later insects and things come and they eat all that up and clean it all out. Well, hummingbirds, though, they poop out of their nest. It's too small. There would be no room. So that's what they do. And I already talked about generations will nest in the same area, and that's why your numbers will build. So if you've got a small amount of hummingbirds, and you say, oh, I've only got one or two, hopefully it's a female, she'll have babies, and then those babies will have babies. And in a matter of a couple years, you could be having dozens and dozens of hummingbirds, especially if you're feeding them the right food and keeping them happy and healthy. You'll have a lot of hummingbirds. Just once you start, it's best to keep going. They are actually sitting here staring at me, and I know you can't see it, but they're staring at me, wanting me to go away. So, so I think I have now answered all your questions, and if not, ask more. I, I absolutely adore the hummingbirds. They're, to me, one of the most fascinating birds. They're so small, and, and think of their life. It's just amazing. I mean, they're... They can live up to eight years in the wild, and they're fascinating little birds, and they're always on the move and always on the go. And they follow me, and I'm just, like I said, I'm watching them right now, and they're just, just so adorable. They follow me around. If the feeders are empty, they'll kind of buzz around my head, and they're basically letting me know we want some more food. And do they get lazy? I, I guess they do get lazy, but it's, it's security. When you have so many birds, they all know that there's going to be some sort of food for them as well as everything else. I have a garden. My garden is full of insects. I've actually seen them jump up in the air and catch fruit flies. It's just amazing. They'll go into my compost piles that I've got my compost in place tubs. And as it's breaking down before I put plants in there, they'll be in there hummingbirds picking out the fruit flies and the little bugs because that's what they need. So with that, I think I've answered almost all your questions, or at least a lot of them. I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget them. If you have more questions, please feel free to ask, and I'll see what I can come up with. And I guess that's it. So please um, feed your hummingbirds sugar and water, white sugar, cane sugar, or beet sugar, and provide them something so they'll hang around. So I think that's it for today. Have a great day. And please like and subscribe. And don't forget, I'm just watching them. They're all over the place right now. They're sitting here watching me. They're hanging in the trees. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.